So we have excellent data that came out from the Impassion 130 trial that demonstrated that adding atezolizumab to NAB paclitaxel in patients who have pdl one positive triple negative metastatic disease, that that improves progression-free and overall survival with a seven-month improvement in overall survival seen from the addition of atezolizumab. So currently the standard is to test all patients with triple negative breast cancer for PDL1 and if PDL1 positive to administer NAB paclitaxel and atezolizumab. However, we are um, eagerly awaiting the data from Keynote 355. Um, which has had a press release and the ASCO abstract has been um, put online, which does suggest that adding pembrolizumab to chemotherapy in patients with PDL1 positive triple negative tumors uh, does improve progression free survival. Um, that trial allowed for choice of chemotherapy backbone with either paclitaxel, NAV paclitaxel, or carboplatin and gemcitabine. And so we'll have to see how those data look and what happens with approvals. But if that were to become an approved regimen, then that could allow for some choice of chemotherapy backbone with um, use of checkpoint inhibition. And I think we'll also have to see how PDL1 testing evolves because currently we've been using SP142 to test for PDL1 and using the IC score. And if that score is greater than one, we've been declaring that patient PDL1 positive and thinking about a tezolizumab. But data from Keynote 355 suggests that um, using a 22C3 antibody and using the CPS score, that the cutoff is 10% with CPS to know if pembrolizumab is gonna add benefit. So, you know, I think um, we will have to see what we're able to do in terms of testing and which antibodies are available and with which testing algorithms for, for getting that information for selection of checkpoint use. So there is also data to suggest that adding immunotherapy for early stage triple negative disease may have benefit as well. We saw data from Keynote 522 suggesting that adding pembrolizumab to preoperative chemotherapy with anthracycline, cytoxan, taxane, and platinum did improve pathologic complete response rates with an absolute difference of around 15%. And we saw a trend towards pembrolizumab improving event-free survival, and we'll need to await final data to see um, if event-free survival is significantly improved from the addition of Pembro to chemo for early stage disease. But I think what was really interesting is that while in the metastatic setting, we saw PDL1 clearly was a biomarker predictor of checkpoint inhibition benefit with chemo, in the early stage setting, we're not seeing PDL1 as a biomarker predictor. So benefit of adding pembrolizumab to chemo was seen in Keynote 522 regardless of PDL1 status. And in fact, the absolute difference between the two arms was even greater in the PDL1 negative subgroup um, compared to the PDL1 positive subgroup. So, you know, I'd like to see the event free survival data um, by PDL1 status, which we don't have mature at this time, um, to confirm that long term outcomes are really seen regardless of PDL1. But I think it really shows that there's great hope that immunotherapy um, may be able to improve outcomes, not just for our metastatic patients, but early, also for our patients with earlier stage disease.